A very warm welcome to all the listeners to this lecture series, Loss Simplified, powered by Abhimanyu IS. As the title of the video reads, the topic for today's discussion is cancellation reports and protest petitions. We all are aware that police is often seen to be carrying out faulty investigations or they are sometimes seen to be conniving with the accused persons and therefore in pursuance of such acts they tend up filing closure reports and dropping all the proceedings which had emanated from the filing from the registration of the FIR at the first place. Now in such cases where the police fails to investigate the case properly or fails to find the evidence, clinching evidence against the accused persons, the rights of a complainant or a victim who has caught that FIR registered at the first instance are very severely prejudiced. So one must think that what is the remedy available to such a complainant under the law to object against such dropping of a FIR or such closure of investigation or the criminal proceedings by the police. The remedy which is available in such cases is that of filing a protest petition. The concept of protest petitions is rather interesting because it is not provided under any law book. The, there is no provision which empowers a aggrieved person to file a protest petition under the criminal procedure code. However, despite of that, the filing of protest petitions against the closure reports or cancellation reports filed by police has been in vogue since quite long. So therefore, in today's lecture, we will be discussing in detail about the procedure pertaining to the filing of protest petitions and what is the duty of the magistrate who receives such protest petition, how is the magistrate supposed to deal with it, how is he supposed to proceed with it. But before coming to the concept of protest petitions, I deem it highly appropriate to briefly explain the difference between a cancellation report and a chalan or charge sheet because interestingly both of them are filed under section 173 of the criminal procedure code. So we all are aware that once an FIR is registered under section 154 of the criminal procedure code, the police carries on its investigation and ultimately the conclusions of the police arrived at qua that particular case are summed up and filed in form of a report under section 1. 73 of the Criminal Procedure Code. However, there could be four scenarios, four instances or four kinds of reports which the police can file. First could be the police comes to a conclusion that the offence has been con committed and there is clinching evidence against the accused to prosecute him for the said offences. In this first scenario, the report which the police is going to file will be called as a chalan or a charge sheet. There could be three more scenarios. The second one would be that the police comes to a conclusion that yes, the offence has been committed, but there is no clinching evidence against the accused to connect him with the offence. Another scenario could be that the police comes to a conclusion that the complaint which was filed on basis of which the FIR was lodged was totally false. And the last scenario could be that the police comes to a conclusion that no offence at all has been committed. Now in these three circumstances, the report which the police will file under section 173 will be called as the cancellation report, closure report or a final report. Now this report, final report, cancellation report or closure report has to be filed before the magistrate. Once it is filed before the magistrate, we need to understand that what is the duty of the magistrate and what is the procedure involved from that stage onwards. See, once the magistrate receives a cancellation report, the first and foremost duty of his first and foremost duty is to make sure that he independently applies his mind on the entire case file or the case diary submitted by the police and the evidence connected with that case and then he must come to a conclusion whether to accept that cancellation report or not. 
Second most important thing that a magistrate is required to do is that he should issue a notice to the complainant or the victim, whoever is affected or prejudiced by accepting such cancellation report to come forth and give his version as to why the same should not be accepted and the case should be put to trial. These are two major things that the magistrate is required to do once he receives a cancellation or a closure report by the police. Now at this stage, the concept of protest petition comes into question. Basically, once the complainant or the victim of the crime has received a notice or he gets to know that the police has filed a cancellation report and he feels that in this in, in such case the cancellation report should not have been filed then he has a right to object against such filing of a cancellation report. Now those objections to simply say are filed in form of a protest petition. Now we need to understand that what is the meaning of a protest petition. Simply put a protest petition is a representation by the complainant or any person who is aggrieved by the faulty investigation of the police and their act of filing a cancellation report in the court. Since as we have already discussed in the very beginning uh, of this lecture that the law pertaining to filing of protest petitions is not codified. It is not provided under the criminal procedure code. There is no provision for it. So it is a practice which has been in vogue since quite long and therefore it is followed. Despite of that, despite of there being no law, there being no provision regarding filing protest petitions, the Honorable Supreme Court in a very recent judgment titled as Vishnu Kumar Tiwari versus State of UP reported as 2019 volume 8 SCC 27. I will repeat Vishnu Kumar Tiwari versus State of UP 2019 volume 8 SCC 27. The Honorable Supreme Court in this matter has discussed the law pertaining to cancellation reports and protest petitions in great detail and it has summarized various principles and various procedures which are required to be followed while filing protest petitions and the procedure which is required to be followed by the magistrate while he is dealing with such pro protest petitions. So therefore, despite of the fact that there is no law as such or there is no provision as such which provides for the power to file a protest petition, yet the Honorable Supreme Court has crystallized the concept in its uh, very recent judgment which I have just stated. Now another question comes for consideration is that who can file a protest petition? One of course the complainant can go ahead and file a protest petition against a cancellation report. Then any person who is closely related to the victim of the uh, offence can also go ahead and file a protest petition. Similarly, in cases pertaining to Prevention of Corruption Act where mostly the complainant is a say official of the say Vigilance Bureau. In such cases, the official, who, uh, in such cases the person who feels aggrieved by closure of the report or closure of the FIR or the case can also go ahead and file a protest petition. Now, we need to understand that uh, once the protest petition is filed, the magistrate has all, is, is supposed to deal with it in a certain manner and then pass appropriate orders. So therefore there are certain duties which are casted upon the magistrate to, uh, to while dealing with the protest petitions. So the first is that once the cancellation report and the protest petition is received by the magistrate, he will independently apply his mind over it and he may come to any of the following four conclusions. First is he may agree with the police and accept the final report and drop all the proceedings against the accused persons. Second could be that he may take cognizance of the offence under section 190 sub clause 1 sub clause B of the criminal procedure code and issue process to the accused persons accordingly. Third could be that he may order further investigation into the offence by the police and <clears throat> In especially in cases where he comes to a conclusion that the investigation has been carried out in a shoddy manner or a perfunctory manner. Last is, the most interesting one, is that he may accept the cancellation report and 
direct that the protest petition be treated as a separate private criminal complaint under section 200 and 202 of the criminal procedure code. Now at this juncture, one must think that if the magistrate accepts the cancellation report, then what is the need to treat the protest petition as a separate criminal complaint? However, this very question has been answered by the Honorable Supreme Court in the judgment of Rakesh and another versus State of UP and another, reported as 2014, Volume 13, SCC 133. Now, in this case, a question which uh, came up for consideration before the Honorable Supreme Court was that whether once the magistrate has accepted the cancellation report, whether he is still entitled to treat the or is he still entitled to order that the protest petition be treated as a separate criminal complaint. The Honorable Supreme Court answered this question in affirmative and held that mere acceptance of a cancellation report by the magistrate does not, it does not act as an embargo or does not make him functus officio to direct that the protest petition be treated as a separate criminal complaint under section 200 and 202 of the criminal procedure code. So now, once one of these four options has been exercised, the protest petition and the cancellation report can be put to rest. Now, before concluding today's session, we need to understand a very important aspect. That is the role of a victim or a complainant in a criminal trial or in a criminal case. See, we all are aware that once an FIR is registered on basis of a complaint by the complainant, after that, the one person who takes the entire limelight in the entire criminal law machinery is the accused. Right from his right to be taken before the magistrate within 24 hours of arrest, to his right of filing a bail application, etc. Everything is focused towards the accused and the complainant or the victim loses sight in this entire process. Sometimes he is totally forgotten. So therefore, it is remedy, it, remedies like the uh, remedy of filing a protest petition which helps the victim or which again puts back the victim into limelight and ensures that his rights are not severely prejudiced. So basically, the, the, the power to file a protest petition expands the role of a victim in a criminal case, which is otherwise very, very bare minimum. Now, having said that, before concluding, I would like to point out certain legal hurdles and issues which need to be addressed so far as the question of filing protest petitions is concerned. And the core legal issue or a legal hurdle which pertains to the same is that the power to file a protest petition is not provided under any statute, it is not codified. Therefore, some of the people are not even aware about this power that they have and eventually if a police files a wrong cancellation report, they do not come forth and do not are not able to object to the same. So therefore, the legislature should take note of this very fact and take proactive steps to ensure that the remedy of filing a protest petition is codified and the entire procedure involved therein is provided in the statute that could be the criminal procedure code. With that, we conclude our today's session. I hope we could gather some learning about this very, very interesting subject of protest petitions and cancellation reports. Thank you.